It's time for me to take you all on another spin, as I do an episode on the fidget spinner. Okay, so as you all know, this thing has become incredibly popular. It's all over YouTube, kids are playing with it all over the place. And I thought, before this thing inevitably becomes unpopular, I should do an episode on it. So in this episode, I'm just going to be doing some tricks with it, seeing how long I can hold it on my thumb without dropping it, and just a whole bunch of cool stuff. And I am also going to be doing this episode with my brother, Harold. So, Harold, are you ready? Sure thing, Seth. Oh, by the way, I have some great news. Oh, really? What's that? I just saved a bunch of money on my car insurance by switching to Geico. Yo, dudes, I'm M&M, and I'm here to promote these chocolate peanut butter M&Ms. These things are delicious with every bite. Mmm. Excuse me, uh, hi, yeah, uh, chocolate peanut butter M&M's, isn't that basically the same thing as Reese Pieces? What? Um, no, of course not. Oh, okay, I was just asking because, I mean, Reese Pieces came out before chocolate peanut butter M&M's, and they're both chocolate, they're both peanut butter, and they both come in snack-sized bites. It just seems like you guys are ripping them off. Uh, uh... Um... Have you ever wanted to have a nice cold glass of urine? Well, now you can, with Mountain Dew. Yes, Mountain Dew. It has been proven by scientists at Oxford that Mountain Dew tastes exactly like urine. There's no difference. Here's what our fans have to say about Mountain Dew. This drink tastes just like I peed straight into the can. I was having a hard time finding a beverage that tasted exactly like urine. But then I found Mountain Dew. I don't like it. Mountain Dew, it tastes like pee. Meet me in the comments, mo- Here at Samsung, we believe in one thing to the utmost, making sure that you never know your own phone number. Our college students do their best to mumble it to you, so you won't understand them, but will be too nervous to ask what they said. You won't find it looking through your phone either. It's not on the front screen, and you won't find it in your contacts. No, you will have to go to settings and scroll to the bottom of the list to my in-phone, where you will find it. But you won't bother to do that, and you don't call yourself, so you don't worry about it. Until someone asks you for it, then you go searching through your phone for an hour like an idiot until you find it. Samsung, we hate you. Order! Order in the court! Okay, this is meeting number 233 of the fast food characters. I am your host for this evening, Ronald McDonald, 1920s version. And I would like to talk about why is it that our sales are dropping, folks? I mean, what is it that we are doing wrong here? I can't understand it. I've been working for Burger King for years, and I have never seen figures so low. Uh, what do you think, Jared? It just doesn't make any sense. You know what, Ronald McDonald? Actually, I do think I know what's going on here. Did it ever occur to you that you all might be creepy? What? What makes you think we're creepy, Steve? Hmm, I don't know, Ronald McDonald. Let's see how many creepy fast food mascots there are. We've got you, the clown, the sneak king, I don't even know what's the matter with him, Colonel Sanders, the weird disembodied hand from Arby's, the girl from Wendy's that looks like she just came out of The Shining, the rat that serves food to children, the Quiznos sponge monkeys, the Domino's spandex guy, and of course we've got Jared, the pedophile. I should probably be in prison right now. You know what? Actually, I'm done here. I'm going to go work for the cereal mascots. They may be all addicted to drugs, but at least they're not pedophiles. I'll see you all later. Well, that was rather straightforward. Okay, I'm going to be honest with you all. My plan was to bring in a headless monkey for marketing, but I, I guess we should just scratch that plan, right? We'll just, we'll just scratch that plan. Walden Books. We're not joking when we say that every book in here is a New York Times bestseller. Seriously, every book that is on the shelf has to be a New York Times bestseller. I mean, I've got to be honest, the title really loses its prominence when every book you get wins the award. I, I know you all don't understand what I'm talking about right now, but j just go into a Walden Books. You'll see what I mean. 
DVDs. The product that managed to replace something that it wasn't superior to. Look at how hard it is to destroy a VHS tape. See, watch. Throw it on the floor and it's completely fine. Now look at this thing. If I bend this the wrong way, it's going to break. If I touch this, if I scratch it, it is going to glitch. I am afraid to put this thing into the DVD player. So, in other words, VHS tapes, they are better than DVDs. I'm sorry, they just are. Pistachios. Weird and wonderful. From what was probably the most uncreative naming group of all time. I mean, pistachios? Why would you just call your product pistachios? I mean, even sunflower seeds are called David sunflower seeds. At least there's a little creativity. Actually, you know what? Nothing about this product makes sense. Why is Stephen Colbert the late night host, the official mascot of the product? And why is there an ice cream flavor? I mean, I, I like pistachios as much as the next guy, but I don't want them on my ice cream. I mean, that's just gross, but... Anyways, pistachios. We couldn't come up with a better name than that. Hi, I'm Ed, and I'm from the world's best-selling pinata brand, El Cinco de Maos. Yep, sir, here at El Cinco de Maos, we honor the age-old tradition of hanging up a pinata on a rope and then giving someone a bat to swing at it while blindfolded. I mean, clearly there ain't nothing that can go wrong with this picture. And to make it even more entertaining, we give the bat to a bunch of fifth graders. Nope. Can't see anything going wrong here. El Cinco de Miles. It ain't fun till someone gets head trauma.